Thank you, Jerome, for the kind introduction. I would like to thank the organizer for the, the invitation. So, this is a quite generic uh, title. Let me be more specific. So, here is the outline of my talk. So, um, I will first uh, introduce some uh, context uh, uh, about uh, research at EDF on this topic and uh, some motivation to develop robust polyhedral discretizations. Then I will move to compatible discretization and uh, take the example of uh, CDO schemes. And we'll give an example of an industrial application with search uh, schemes devoted to groundwater flows. And then I will give some uh, outline uh, related to the Stokes equation with these schemes and uh, several ongoing works and perspectives. So, um, EDF uh, has been developing several in-house simulation codes for more than 30 years. The aim of uh, this development is to be able to simulate uh, different uh, uh, studies where we want to understand and improve uh, the study, uh, the safety and the life of the uh, power plant and also their efficiency. Many of our, our simulation codes are open source. And uh, concerning the fluid dynamics, this is code Saturn, and so for structural mechanics, it is a code Aster. So here you have the, the links if you want to take a look. So to be more specific uh, regarding code Saturn, the code where I, with, uh, with the woman work, um, so this is a, a single phase flow solver based on collocated finite volume schemes. This is a discretization which is quite similar to what you can find in commercial codes like Star CD or Fluent. Uh, two main features of Code Saturn is uh, its extensive verification and validation process, and also um, the effort put to to have a, an efficient solver. Uh, with respect to high performance computing. So we want to, to keep these two features, but we also want to improve two um, additional properties um, thanks to new discretizations uh, regarding the flexibility, because we need uh, numerical schemes which is less sensitive to the mesh quality if we want to handle more efficiently polyhedral and or poor quality meshes. Second aspect is uh, the physical fidelity. Um, we want to preserve uh, better the structural properties of equation system at a discrete level, and also to have a stronger mathematical foundation. So now I will try to, to give some uh, motivation to handle polyhedral meshes in a, in a digital context. The main purpose is to reduce time to um, dedicate it to the mesh generation. So by using um, polyhedral machines, meshes, we can, for instance, use automatic machine tools, such as the one in ANSYS with a trimmer algorithm, or in StarCCM with a dolone voronoi algorithm plus a specific treatment near the boundary wall. The second aspect is to use flexible uh, mesh joining cap capabilities uh, available in Code Saturn to uh, be able, in fact, to build several uh, meshes which are smaller and then put it together to define the wall mesh. For instance, here there are three meshes, this one, this one, and this one. And as um, the meshes are possibly non-conform, we have to handle the non-conformity by introducing polyhedral cells at the interfaces. Another point to, to reduce time to mesh is to, and re, time to mesh and also to compute the solution, is to put um, the refinement where you want uh, where it matters. So for instance, here, you have a, a polyhedral cells at the, at the interfaces, or to, to catch the boundary layer with less elements. 
like in this picture. And even if we don't use a polyhedral uh, mesh, when meshing complex geometries, we often, um, uh, it often turn out, it turns out that uh, distorted cells um, are in the mesh. So like in this, uh, in this situation. So there is a need to get robust space discretizations. So I will now uh, talk uh, about compatible discretization. And this is a joint work with uh, Alexandre Ern and um, a former PhD and a current PhD, uh, Pierre Quentin and Ricardo Milani. So what are compatible discretization? Also called structural preserving or mimetic discretization. The aim of such discretization is to preserve the structural properties of PDE at the discrete level. That means to, to keep a local discrete conservation, um, get a, a right representation uh, of, the dis, of the differential operator operators at the discrete level, to keep uh, the monotonicity, and to eliminate uh, all the sources of spurious modes. So this is the aim. This is not an easy task. And um, from an historical point of view, there, are, there were several pioneer works in the electromagnetics community and also in the mathematical uh, community. And for the fluid mechanics, um, the famous Max Kim has been introduced uh, a long time ago. And this is a, a, a dream for, for somebody like, uh, like me is to, to extend the Max Kim to uh, polyhedral cells. So now to be more specific about uh, CDO, here's some of uh, the main feature. So this is um, uh, a low order um, method for polyhedral meshes. It shares the same building principles as incompatible uh, discretization. And there are several families of uh, CDO schemes according to the localization of the degrees of freedom. We can um, handle vertex, edge, face, or cell-based schemes. And there, is, um, there are several uh, operators that enable us, that enable us to unify the analysis at the discrete and the functional uh, level. And in uh, CDO, there is a use of different kinds of submeshes according to the discretization we have uh, in mind. So here is a list of uh, the work devoted to um, CDO. And I will, uh, to introduce the method, I will focus on this and give some uh, um, uh, uh, information about what we are doing with uh, Stokes um, right now. So uh, in CDO, we consider all the kind of entities uh, on a mesh, that is to say, vertices V and edge E with its inner, its own uh, orientation, which is arbitrary, a face F with its uh, arbitrary uh, normal, and um, a cell C. So I will keep this notation during uh, all the, the talk. So arrow are designed the degrees of freedom in such uh, approach. This is, in fact, a common to compatible discretizations. Uh, there are mainly four types of degrees of freedom, potential, circulation, flux, and densities. Potential are related to a scalar field, which is evaluated at a point. Circulation vector field evaluated along a path through its uh, tangential component. A flux across a surface through the normal component of a vector field. And density inside a volume. So if we use this, uh, uh, this definition, it turns out that naturally, on a primary mesh, we end up with Doram maps. That is to say, a potential will be the evaluation of the potential at each mesh vertices, the circulation, the evaluation of the circulation along each mesh, mesh uh, edge uh, meshes, and so on. So this is algebraic spaces. Uh, as a dimension, the number of entities in the mesh. So now, if we consider the differential operators, uh, the building principle has the following. 
for the gradient, this is a, a fundamental theorem of calculus uh, stated here. And in fact, we, we see that the gradient is a linear combination of discrete potential. For the discrete curl, this is a Kelvin-Stock theorem, the key identity. And the discrete curl is, in fact, a linear combination of discrete circulation. And for the divergence, which is a, what is used uh, commonly in uh, finite volume schemes, this is a Gauss theorem, and we end up with a divergent, discrete divergence. This is a combination of discrete fluxes. So now, if we put the definition of the degrees of freedom and the definition of the discrete differential um, together, we end up with a nice uh, commuting diagrams, uh, which is here. So this is the continuous level, the discrete level, and the Dura maps, and the definition of the discrete differential operators. So by when I uh, talk about uh, commuting diagrams, it means that, for instance, starting from a potential and a continuous potential and applying the gradient at the continuous level and then reducing at the mesh edges, we have the same results as starting from the potential, the, um, reducing at mesh vertices, and then applying the discrete gradient. So if this is a, a commuting diagram, that means that there is no consistency error by doing these operations. And uh, another uh, point is that we also recover the um, exact sequence at the continuous <coughs> level at the discrete level, thanks to these uh, uh, commuting diagrams. So that means that every discrete gradient, the curl of every discrete gradient will be zero, and the divergence of every uh, discrete curl will be zero. So let's consider now the diffusion equation and um, how it is uh, handled in uh, compatible discretization. In fact, the two f these two relations are directly the definition of the discrete differential operators. And so, as we can see, thanks to the commuting property, this is uh, with no consistency error. So all the, um, the approximation will be uh, put in this relation, which is where the physical modeling appears. So we have a choice. Either we build a flux starting from a reconstruction of the gradient, or we have a flux and we reconstruct a gradient starting from a flux. So I will um, uh, present you all the CDO schemes that are available in Code Saturn. So the first choice is we have a potential. Where, is the, where they are defined at the discrete level. If the choice is at primary vertices, we end up with vertex base. The key operator is the gradient reconstruction, the gradient reconstruction in this case. And we can have a non-conforming reconstruction. Uh, this is here. And the starting formulation is a primal formulation. But we can also have a conforming reconstruction, reconstruction. And in this case, the key uh, operator is also a gradient reconstruction, but specifically how to reconstruct the potential in a conforming manner. We can also add an unknown, which is evaluation of the potential at the cell center. And we end up with a vertex plus cell based scheme. And in this case, this is very similar to this one, but the, the reconstruction of the potential is a bit uh, modified. In all these cases, the key operator is a, a gradient reconstruction. Now we can choose to uh, define the degrees of freedom for the potential at the cell centers. And in the general case, we have a non-conforming reconstruction of the flux this time. And we have to introduce another uh, unknown, which is a flux, a discrete flux. And the starting formulation is a mixed formulation. But as it is usual, starting from a mixed formulation, we can also have an hybrid formulation. And in this case, it's like we have um, 
phase-based unknowns for the potential, but also cell unknowns of the potential and the potential. And thanks to the static condensation, we can remove this and end up with only phase-based phase unknowns. In this case, this is also a gradient reconstruction, which is uh, uh, the key operator, but with a different gradient and a different reconstruction. And the starting formulation is in fact uh, this one, that is to say the primal formulation, but on each cell. And then we have um, an interface condition ensuring that we have a conservation of the normal flux. So here's a picture of all CDO schemes available and I will now detail each one. So, in the case of non-conforming CDO vertex base, so the unknown is at primary vertices, and the gradient is along edges. Here is a discrete variational formulation. So the Q operator is this one, I will detail it uh, soon. And for the uh, right-hand side, this is a simple uh, reconstruction which is constant inside this volume, which is associated to each vertex of the polyhedral cell. For the gradient for construction, the key partition is the one associated to the edge. And if we look at the reconstruction, in fact, that's something uh, living on each edge. Um, the principle is to uh, split the reconstruction into two parts, a consistent one and a stabilized one. Um, the consistent one is constant inside the cell, and this one has uh, the, its mean value, which is uh, equal to zero. And here is a parameter to, to get different schemes. And a, a key uh, geometrical uh, relation gives this one, where it appears that the useful quantity is this vector error, key, which is um, in one-to-one -one pairing between each edge. So this is for the non-conforming case. In the case of conforming CD over text base, in fact, it is something uh, as a finite element for polyhedral meshes, because we consider, in fact, a subdivision, an implicit uh, subdivision into tetrahedra of the cell with this kind of, of tetrahedron uh, edge, the face center and the cell center. Then we need to interpolate starting from the knowledge of the value at only the mesh, the cell vertices, some an interpolation, a linear interpolation at the face and at the cell. And this is um, done by using uh, a weighting which is given by the geometry. For the face, we use this area divided by the area of the face. And for the volume, this volume divided by the, the volume of the cell. And it gives a linear interpolation. We plug it for each detailed one into this relation, and then we plug this in this relation, and we have the scheme. In the case of vertex plus cell, this is quite uh, similar, but we do not to interpolate the cell unknown. It is a degree of freedom. We keep the same interpolation, and we use this conforming reconstruction, and we can also use static condensation, and at the end, we have only a system on vertices. So, now if we consider cell-based scheme, the discrete formulation is this mixed one, and the Q operator is how to reconstruct the discrete flux. So this is a saddle point problem, which is for the efficiency, not the best uh, starting point. And now it's not the gradient, but the, the divergence which appears. And we use the same kind of uh, reconstruction, a consistency part, which is constant inside the cell, and a stabilization part, where the geometrical quantities are either the, the, um, this array or the vector array for this phase. And so the reconstruction is piecewise constant in each uh, pyramid. When we hybridize the mixed formulation, we end up with a hybrid set of degrees of freedom, potential at the face center and at the cell center. 
the gradient is in fact the difference of these two uh, potential, this one minus this one. We have a reconstruction of the gradient which is constant in each pyramid and the same principle. And here the same quantity but they are used in a different manner. But in fact, uh, in, in during my PhD, we and during the PhD of Pierre Quentin, we uh, demonstrate under classical mesh regularity assumption that vertex phase cell based schemes um, uh, converge, they are stable and well posed, and this rely on the stability of the reconstruction operator and on discrete Poincare inequality. And we have uh, two kind of error estimates. The first order convergence rate in energy norm for the gradient of the flux, and the second order convergence rate for the, in the L2 norm for the potential under the additional elliptic regularity. But this, also, this is also um, a way to understand the links between the different schemes. And starting from cell based scheme, we can recover on tetrahedral wall meshes. Ravert, Thoman, and Delec, or uh, on polyhedral meshes, mimetic finite differences, mimetic finite volume. In the case of phase based hybrid finite volume, and if the choice of the beta coefficient is this one, we end up with a sushi scheme with all the cell unknown eliminated. Uh, this is similar to HHO k equals zero, but with a different stabilization. And we also end up with a generalized, generalized cruiser aviar with a choice beta equal one. All these schemes enter into the HM uh, framework. And if we consider vertex-based scheme, we recover Lagrange P1 finite element and tetrahedral meshes, or nodal mimetic finite, uh, finite differences on polyhedral meshes. This is equivalent to the discrete geometric scheme approach scheme if beta is equal to one third and two uh, vertex approximate gradient. And all these are a kind of gradient schemes. So let's move now to numerical results. So I will consider the first test case of the FVC six benchmark and compare CDO schemes with um, the L2 around the potential and, and the energy norm for this kind of mesh sequences. So here's for Cartesian meshes. Um, this one is phase-based. This is non-conforming vertex-based. The conforming vertex-based and the vertex plus cell-based. So you can see that there is a difference in the accuracy, but not in the order of convergence. This is not the case for the gradient where we can find a super convergence uh, in this specific mesh sequence for the non-conforming and the vertex plus cell and the um, vertex-based conforming uh, discretization. So this is the same kind of result for tetrahedral meshes, for distorted prismatic meshes, and for distorted polyhedral meshes, and also for checkerboard meshes. So now I will uh, focus on uh, an industrial application using this kind of discretization, which is devoted to groundwater flow. This is a joint work with Raphael Lamour and Yvian Fournier, which are colleagues. So what are the problems at stake? So we solve the Richard equ Richard's equation. We build a discrete Darcy flux, and then we use it to uh, transport equation. So uh, you will notice that uh, this uh, diffusion tensor implies a Darcy flux, which has been previously uh, computed. And so there is strong uh, anisotropy or uh, strong heterogeneity in the soil. So we use for this uh, application uh, non conforming vertex based schemes, and we are in the case of saturated soil modeling. So to solve the research equation, it's exactly what I saw you uh, just before. Then we have to compute the Darcy quantity. And to compute the Darcy quantity, we uh, have this gradient, which is exact. And then we have to reconstruct this gradient into uh, uh, entities of interest. 
And we use this operator, which is in fact called discrete odd operator. But we also have to use the vector valued, which is estimated as a mean value of a reconstruction function. And we use this quantity to build the, the diffusion tensor in this case. Here is the transport equation. This is the unsteady term, the advection term, where you can have different convection operator that will not, uh, uh, that I don't talk in this, uh, in this presentation. The advection term, which uses the, the reconstruction of the potential, and the source term. So, um, regarding the time scheme, we use either an implicit Euler or Kronk Nicholson. Here is uh, the study we have in mind. This is in the context of the CGO uh, nuclear waste storage facility. Uh, this is a facility where we have high activity and medium activity um, or radioactive waste. So this is a, a, a project which is a, a first importance for EDF since uh, this is also a, a big project. It is evaluated by Andra to uh, 25 billion uh, euros. So this is the Andra which is uh, in charge of this subject and the Nuclear Safety Agency, which is the authority in charge of the control. But for EDF, as a major contributor, um, we want to have uh, our own expertise on this subject. So this is a challenging study. Um, the aim of the study is to, to evaluate the validity of the design of the storage facility by estimating the quantity of radionuclides released in the biosphere. Why it is challenging? Because this is a large geometry, several kilometers wide, with uh, uh, small geometric details and many storage cells. And this is also a long-term study since one's evolution over one million years. So, at the end, we tested the scheme up to one billion mesh cell with an adaptive time step strategy. So how to build the mesh? In fact, we are able to build the one billion mesh cell with less than 10 minutes by using um, some uh, facility uh, available in Katsatune. This is a parallel joining algorithm. And also we take advantage of the redundancy of the geometry. So in fact, we have several uh, pieces of meshes, uh, of meshes like this one, we load it in the, in the code, then we duplicate it, translate it, and then we join all, all these uh, meshes together to get the, the final mesh. As you can see, there are non-conformity and even strong non-conformity. So the colleague in charge of the study want to check that the scheme was able to to reproduce um, linear solution on this kind of uh, meshes. So he did a test, um, strong heterogeneity, and he put the non-conformity where the, so the, the permeability is different. So here we have 10 to the power of five, and here one, and the stress test was to uh, be uh, able to reproduce exactly the linear solution with uh, one face cut into 64 uh, faces. So here are the, the results. So this is for the uh, 500 million mesh cell. Um, here is the hydraulic head in the clay. Here is the isoline of the, of the tracer. And we also want to check if the mesh refinement gives the same kind of result for uh, quantity of interest. So here is the, the um, a dimensional total quantity of radionuclides in the, in the domain, and here is the um, outflow flux of radionuclides. So now, regarding the performance, this is a massively parallel simulation which has been performed, and to build a 1 billion uh, degree, of systems of degree of freedom systems, it takes le less than one second by using 
uh, more than 10,000 cores. And for the global study, with a 500 million cell mesh and uh, more than 300, 3,000 uh, iterations, it takes less than three hours, which is uh, uh, something uh, feasible for the engineering. But if we look at the result, so there is a perfect scaling for building the linear system, a good scaling for, the, for solving the linear solver, but as at the starting point, the time dedicated to solve the linear system is uh, more time consuming. At the end, we end up with 85% of the time dedicated to solve the linear system. That's why we, we want to improve this step to, to, be, uh, to be faster. Because we have in mind to test uh, um, the sensitivity to different parameters and so run uh, several simulations of this kind. So now I will move to the Stokes equation. Um, so the Stokes equation deals with CDO phase based schemes. So this is a PhD of Ricardo Milani. The starting point is this uh, equation. So, and in this case, the two key operators are the gradient reconstruction operator to discretize this term and a divergence operator for this one. And this one is uh, the adjoint of this one. So the velocity space is defined as, a hybrid, as an hybrid space with the real freedoms at faces and cells. There is uh, as many degrees of freedom as a component, either at faces or at cells. And for the pressure, it's only one degree of freedom in each cell. So here is uh, the way to reconstruct the velocity gradient, which is in fact very similar to what I show you in the phase-based scheme, but it's tensorized. And for the cell-wise divergence, we define it by taking the consistency part and then use the trace of this operator. So this is a classical formulation, and in case of planar phases, this term uh, drops. So here is a discrete variational formulation of the scheme. And in fact, this is very close to uh, uh, HHO key equals zero. Only the stabilization is uh, a bit different. Uh, this is more a, a sushi-like way of reconstructing the, the gradient. Uh, so we, we have as, as convergence uh, results that this is an instable discretization with um, uh, order two for the velocity in L2 norm and one in uh, L2 norm for the pressure. And we have also as a result that the discrete velocity uh, field is cell-wise divergence-free. Here is a test case on a different kind of uh, uh, mesh sequence. And uh, we, we recover the, the order of convergence for the velocity and for the pressure. I want to say that for this mesh, the Kershaw mesh, in fact, this is a, um, a bit hard to, to perform a convergence analysis as the mesh regularity is not uh, verify during the refinement of the mesh. So now let's talk about ongoing works. So ongoing works are uh, devoted to Navier-Stokes equation. So this is implemented in code Saturn, but we, we need more tests. In fact, uh, we have two, two works. Uh, the first one is to couple the velocity field arising from the Stokes and Navier-Stokes equation, and to use uh, this field as a transport field for, truss, for trussers. And also look at different uh, ways to couple the velocity and the pressure. Uh, what I show you is a monolithic way with a saddle point uh, a system to solve, but uh, we also have uh, augmented Lagrangian with our algorithm and also artificial compressibility uh, algorithm with the possibility to get higher order uh, in time. Uh, we want to improve the convection schemes. Up to now, it's uh, uh, 
uh, simple uh, uh, upwind scheme, and also uh, to look at pressure robust discretization. Uh, we also have HHO schemes in uh, Cut Saturn, which are uh, uh, parallel with uh, MPI and OpenMP, and this is available for k equal one and k equal two. Uh, that means that we have uh, the same level of performance for these schemes as those I show you uh, on the industrial uh, test case. Is uh, to show you that this is. Uh, implemented correctly. And this is a joint work uh, with uh, the University of Montpellier with uh, um, Daniel Castanon and Daniele Di Pietro. So what is available is the different program in scalar and vector value. We, uh, I have to integrate the, the work related to stops and uh, some works in progress uh, are currently uh, uh, performed on scalar value that vection. So uh, let me talk a bit about uh, Cuts, uh, Aster, where HHO schemes are also uh, um, uh, evaluated. Uh, this is a work with uh, Michael Abbas, Alexandre Hern, and uh, Nicolas Pigné. And the applications are hyperelasticity and fi finite elastoplastic deformations with logarithmic strain. So, this is not available in the, in the open source code, but uh, there is a work in progress for the integration into Codaster. And here are the results. And uh, so the conclusion is that HHO supports large deformations, and there is no volumetric locking with the HHO in primal formulation. So now, uh, some other perspectives. There is a current work on extending the, the ALO ILE uh, with a CDO in a, the leg, with a legacy software, legacy discretization. Uh, also, uh, uh, a work about magneto hydrodynamics, uh, Ashdin confirming reconstruction with uh, Monash University, and um, a project about uh, linear solvers for robust discretization. This is a joint work with CERFAC, CDF, University of Montpellier, and ERIT. And this is a subject, subject of the next, next talk. So uh, all uh, the CDO and HHO developments are freely available. So don't hesitate to try and test it. Thank you for your attention.